the San Antonio Spurs are one of the greatest organizations in the entire NBA. Despite being in a small market, they've always found a way to be successful ever since their inaugural season in 1976. The franchise has one of the highest regular season win percentages, the fourth most playoff victories, not to mention five championships to their name. So it's safe to say that they're one of the most storied teams in NBA history. But in the latter half of the 2010s, the Spurs seemed to hit a wall. With their record tying 22 year postseason streak being snapped a few seasons ago, the Spurs entered the 2021 22 season having missed the playoffs twice in a row in the first time in franchise history. Not to mention other factors like their best player DeMar DeRozan leaving in free agency and their great head coach Greg Popovich contemplating retirement. With all of that, RC Buford and the rest of the front office finally decided to hit the restart button on this team. They began their long awaited rebuild, and in all honesty, they've been doing an excellent job at it. So, here's how the San Antonio Spurs are rebuilding this team the correct way. But, guys, before we get into the video, please remember to give this video a like, share, and subscribe. I'll greatly appreciate it. And if you can give me a follow on Instagram and TikTok at Sportsbot Casually, I'll really love that as well. The links to both of those social medias are in a link tree below. Uh, guys, I'm so close to 100 followers on TikTok, so if you give me up to there, I'm at like 97. If you guys can help me out, reach 100, greatly appreciate it. So, let's begin a free agency last offseason with the Russell Westbrook and the LA Lakers trade. Boy, I wonder how that's working out for them. <laughs> Not good. That's right, in case you forgot, which I don't blame you, it was very confusing. The Spurs were actually involved in that clusterfuck of a five team trade. In it, they gave the Nets the rights to their 2015 first round pick and received Chandler Hutchinson from the Wizards, who they later waived, and essentially a 2022 second round pick via the Pistons. So, yeah, they get things off to a really nice start. They get an early second round pick basically for the free skis. They later did a sign and trade with the Pacers, where they received Doug McBuckets, a conditional 2023 second rounder, and a second round pick swap in 2026, all for their heavily protected 2023 second round pick. And lastly, we have the DeMar DeRozan sign and trade, where the Bulls gave them Al Farouk Amino, who they later waived, Thaddeus Young, who was traded, but we'll get to that. Uh, Conditional 2025 first round pick, an unprotected 2025 second round pick, and a Lakers 2022 second round pick. And with the drafting of the youngest player in the class in Josh Primo, not to mention their free agency signings of Zach Collins, Bates Diop, and Jock Landale, it really showed that the front office were committed to playing and developing young guys and young talent. This approach resulted in the Spurs entering the season with only four players 27 or older. Now, the regular season has been kinda rough for San Antonio, which is to be expected of a young rebuilding team. But it's not been without its bright spots. Point guard DeJounte Murray continues to be one of the best two-way guards in the entire league and was named to his first All-Star game this season. He's having a career year, he developed a deadly mid-range game and at the time I'm recording this, he's currently leading the league in steals per game with 2.1. Center Jakob Pritel has expanded his offensive game. He's taking more shots and he's taking his scoring range further away from the paint, which you love to see. This to go along with his stifling defense in the paint makes him an absolute menace to go up against on both ends. And as a Raptors fan, it's great to see how much he's developed. We miss you, buddy. I view both those guys as the players for the Spurs to build around. They're both relatively young, they're both two-way players. The only problem with this is that Pirtle is only under contract with the Spurs for one more season. But I do think he will resign with them. Outside of those two, let's take a look at the other young guys that this roster has to offer. Olympian Keldon Johnson has improved greatly this season. He's second on the team in scoring, he's shooting his threes at a great clip, and he's also a beast on the boards. Sophomore Devin Vassell has got more playing time this season, which has allowed him to improve on his rookie campaign. He's translated his shooting talents from college to the pros, but I would like to see him cut down on his turnovers. Another sophomore in Trey Jones has received more playing time this season and has put together a decent campaign. He's a good playmaker for this team, and you'll know 
I love my play me game pass first type of point guards but he's just not knocking down his threes at all granted he isn't taking much of them but that is a skill I would like to see him develop you know you need a three ball to go further in this league I've been pretty disappointed in Lonnie Walker um, he is kind of regressed from last season and I actually thought he was a candidate to get moved by the trade deadline but he obviously didn't which begs the question, will they pay him in the offseason and if so, how much? They've also received good contributions from other guys who I have not mentioned. Uh, Doug McDermott, Bates Diop and Josh Primo. But I think in the middle of the season, they kind of realized, they were like, yo, we really need to commit to this rebuild. Uh, we have some nice young pieces now, but let's try to expand our draft capital and see how much we could get. And I mean, why not commit to the rebuild? In for penny, in for pound, right? With their goal crystal clear, the Spurs probably became the most active team before trade deadline. In mid-January, they were involved in a three-team trade, which saw them move Bryn Forbes to the Nuggets and received a protected 2028 second round pick from the Nuggets, uh, Juancho, I'm saying that name correct, Hernan Gomez, and Cash from the Boston Celtics. But don't worry, Hernan Gomez wasn't on this team for long. The day before the deadline, the Spurs were involved in another three-team trade. I guess three is not a crowd for them, huh? They traded Hernan Gomez, which was his third team in just under a month, by the way, to the Jazz and received uh, Thomas Sadoransky from the Blazers and a least favorable 2027 second round pick from the Jazz. Finally, on deadline day, the Spurs were involved in two trades, one which involved my team, and the second one was probably the most underrated move of the deadline. In their first move, they traded veteran Thaddeus Young, Drew Eubanks, and the Pistons' 2022 second round pick to the Raptors in exchange for Goran Dragic and our lottery protected first round pick this year. More than likely, the pick will convey for the Spurs this season. You know, the Raptors are currently over 500, so hopefully best case scenario for us, it's like, late teens early 20s kind of vibes but the Spurs pick up another first round pick this season so that's a big W now let's get to the last trade of the deadline where they sent Derek White to the Celtics in exchange for Romeo Langford Josh Richardson the the Celtics 2022 first round pick top four protected and the rights to swap first round picks with the Celtics in 2028 so two first round picks at the deadline, big, big W for the Spurs. Yes, it does suck that they broke up the backcourt of DeJounte and White. And, you know, it looked like DeJounte was kind of hurt about it. But the Spurs got incredible value for him. Now, the Spurs are entering the 2022 NBA Draft with potentially three first-round picks. Their own, which is probably going to be top 10. Depends if they win more games or not. And two, which are giving me, as I was saying earlier late teens early 20s vibes they could either use them to draft three rookies or draft somebody in the top 10 and package those later picks to move up in the draft to select somebody they want earlier they have a lot of potential with what they could do with those picks it's not only for this season the spurs have a cache of future draft picks now it's kind of hard to get an exact number or how many they have per year with all the different protections and swaps they have on them. So I'm going to leave a link below to an article which gives you a better detailed breakdown of their future draft picks. No matter the exact number, just know it's a lot. So, you know, RCB Ford and company have done a great job of acquiring these picks in a very short space of time. To go along with all of those draft picks, the Spurs are also entering the offseason with a lot of cap space. Now, if we're being real and honest, the 2022 free agency class isn't headlined by the biggest names. And all the biggest names are guards. But I think there are some young guys that line up with the timeline of this team that the Spurs could try to throw a lot of money at this offseason. I could see them offering deals to guys like Colin Sexton, Jalen Smith, and even Marvin Bagley because they're still relatively young and have a lot of potential. Or maybe this team decides, you know what, we have enough young guys right now, let's try to go out and get some vets, you know, to be more competitive, either via free agency or via trades, who knows. 
this team can choose to go about the offseason in a myriad of ways. Now, I, like everybody watching this video, have no idea what the Spurs would choose to do in the offseason and for the future. The biggest question mark hanging over this team right now is the impending retirement of Greg Popovich. I'm really not too sure if he hangs up his boots at the end of this season or not. But I'm sure we all can agree that the rebuild which this team has undertaken this season is off to a fantastic start. And who knows, maybe the return of the Spurs dynasty is closer than we think. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you guys really enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you think about the Spurs season in the comments below. I think their rebuild is off to a great start, but you might think differently. Let me know why. And Spurs fans, I want to hear from you. What do you think this team does in the offseason and more importantly the draft? Do you think if all three first round picks convey that they select three rookies or they might package some in a trade? I would love to hear your thoughts in my comments below. But guys, that is all for now. As I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember, like, share and subscribe. Greatly appreciate it. And I shall see you all for my next video. Stay safe and later.